for two or three months now, I've been getting this text message on my phone. Jesus has a message for you. My reaction varies from, okay, that's weird, to, right, I know that. And you may have gotten those messages too, and I'd be interested in what your reaction is to them. The thing is, they don't go away no matter what I do, no matter how many times I try to clear them. I mean, do you get your mystical experiences from random messages on your cell phone? Billions and billions of years ago, a galaxy known as the Large Magellanic Cloud suffered a trauma and lost its ability to make stars. And this Magellanic Cloud floated in space for billions more years until it came into proximity with our galaxy, the Milky Way. The gravitational force between these two galaxies brought them into proximity and established what you might call a relationship and allowed the Milky Way to penetrate deep into the heart of the Magellanic Cloud. And when this happened, the Magellanic Cloud regained its ability to make stars. 2020 some years ago, a blink of an eye in cosmic time, the evolution of the world with God produced an unprecedented human who was also part of the trinity of persons who are holding the universe within their sphere of energy, within their matrix of love. That man, Jesus, brought a new pattern of life, a pattern based on relationships of witness and compassion of nonviolence. That pattern became the bridge over which the universe could be unified and restored to order. You may laugh at me and tell me that if this is what restoration to order looks like, we better find a better idea. But you have to think in cosmic terms. You have to think in terms of billions of years, like the Magellanic Cloud and the Milky Way. The death and resurrection of this human Jesus, because Jesus was indeed human, made it possible for us to become not just dust and compost, but part of the source of life in a new way. The death of Jesus meant that his human but divine energy exploded into the universe and became forevermore part of each of us. This is not just hokey religiosity. This is not feelgoodreligion.net. This is in the air we breathe, in the elements of our bodies. We have Jesus in the way that we have everyone who ever has lived. All of these developments, God and creation evolving so that finally Christ could arrive in human form, Jesus living and dying in relationship with other human beings, and Christ exploding in love from the death of Jesus. All of these developments are the movement of love. I think this is what we mean when we talk about reconciliation. Reconciliation is the process of becoming aware of witnessing, of witnessing Christ's love within and among us so that we become willing agents in the healing of the world, willing agents of healing. This is what is meant by the forgiveness of sin, that Jesus in relationship, in resonance, think about those galaxies, in resonance, with us, healed our trauma enough for us to want to stop killing each other. It's an evolutionary step to want to stop killing each other. Plautinus, an early Greek philosopher who influenced Augustine, thought that sin was not saying no, it was saying not yet. I am not yet ready to want peace and justice enough to stop violence and oppression. And that that not yet is what gives rise to sin. The resonance of Jesus with human beings, the relationship of love between Jesus and others, eventually allowed people to say, I am ready. 
I am ready to bear witness to the pain of the world, to engage it, to feel it, because I believe that it and I will be healed that way. That's what turning away from sin means. That's resonance with the Trinity. That is heaven. We do live in an unimaginably long evolutionary arc, but within this arc there are decisive moments, but again, they're not moments as we measure them, in which the universe makes decisive leaps into greater awareness, greater unity, and yes, greater love. And when that happens, we move one more step closer to the merging of heaven with earth. And despite our continued relationship with violence, we do have stunning examples of readiness to heal. 53 years ago today, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis. Dr. King was a student and apostle of the great Howard Thurman, who was the saint of the nonviolent movement and the civil rights actions in this country. Thurman became the power of, nonviolent, of the nonviolent movement after he studied with Mohandas Gandhi in India. These men admired Jesus and they were organized and energized and authorized by his life. These men had tremendous impact for the good on people everywhere and especially for people of color in this country. No one could miss the pattern of Jesus expressing itself in everything that they did. These brave, heroic men and countless other people since that time changed hearts, changed laws, changed the fundamental way that we saw each other for a long time. This is resurrection at its best. This is the slow evolution of Christ the Omega among us. And so, to get back to the text, when Mary Magdalene stands outside the tomb weeping, she is resonant with, she has penetrated the trauma of the crucifixion of her friend and teacher. She has loved him, and now she holds his pain and hers. It's this deep resonance, think about those galaxies, this deep resonance with Jesus that allows her to recognize him despite his glorified nature, after he completes the circuit between them by calling her name. Witnessing, resonating, loving, healing. That's the new pattern of life Jesus came to give us. The Paschal Mystery is a deep and complex concept, but this much I understand about it. The resurrection of Jesus means that each of us, past, present, and yes, to come, has within us the resurrected Jesus. Whoever we are, however we think about ourselves, how little we believe in ourselves, or how skeptical we feel, we are in fact powerful forces for reconciliation and healing. We are agents of evolution and we are on the brink of a new development. The violence that lives in us and among us is part of us, but it is only part. We are awakening to the ways in which we consciously and unconsciously permit violence to hurt each other. And we feel the pain of that awareness. But through the mystery of the resurrection, if we come together to stand against violence, the whole host of our ancestors and yes, of our descendants, because Jesus is not on our time, but on Trinity time, will stand with us and we will start to heal this world. That tremendous cloud of witnesses, that cosmic field of energy, which is love, that willingness to see and feel the pain and hurt and not turn away will bring us together. If God is with us, who can be against us? We shall walk in peace. We will overcome. I saw the message for the umpteenth time on my phone.
And I finally realized that it didn't matter how it came to me. It only mattered that I got the message. May the promise of the resurrection pour down deeply into your hearts and give you courage and energy and hope. Amen.